Hello, all M2 students. This morning you have taken the preliminary test, and I think some of you may find it uh, too difficult or very defeated. Uh, but never mind, I don't want you to feel uh, uh, very depressed after doing this test. I just hope to uh, uh, like uh, assess your ability and also let you taste uh, what algebra is about. And uh, these questions are not M2 questions, uh, they are just some uh, warm up exercise. Uh, even you get very low marks this time, never mind. Okay, later we will uh, try to catch up. So, uh, in this video, I would like to to explain some of the details and some concepts uh, in these 10 questions. Uh, not all of them will be uh, much related to M2 syllabus, but I think they would help you to understand more about maths. Alright, so let's start from number one. Number one is a warm-up question, and I suppose or you should have some sense about 12.5%. Uh, well, if you know that this is exactly 1 over 8, then you can uh, calculate it as 80% multiplied by 1 over 8. Then the answer would be either like 10%, 0 0.1, or 1 over 10, all of them should be correct. Right, however, if you do not know how to deal with percentage, just say uh, if you calculate 80 multiplied by 12.5, and then you will uh, appear, uh, you will uh, encounter percent percent, and then some, somehow you may not know uh, exactly how to deal with that. So I would suggest you to uh, do it in this way, or you can uh, just calculate 80 over 100 and then 12.5 over 100 that's fine okay, but most i uh, hope that you can understand that 12.5 uh, percent is 1 over 8. okay let's look at number two when i said this question i do not expect that you expand all the terms because uh, it may take you a lot of time to write out all the terms however uh, as you can see that all the um, expressions here are positive right? all, all the terms here are positive so after the expansion uh, there would be no missing degree from the maximum to the minimum. Also, you only need to judge that what is the maximum degree after the expansion, which is x to the power 8, and what is the least degree would be constant. And there would be no missing terms in between x to the power 8 and 1. So you have x to the power 8, x to the power 7, x to the power 6, and then up to x and then x to the power 0. It means all together, there should be 9 terms of different degrees. So we have nine terms after simplification of this expansion. Number three, uh, this is just a question about factorization. However, uh, because I put it in the Google Classroom, I, I don't know how you can type the factorized form, so that's why I put the question in this way. Uh, don't let it scare you, it's just a factorization problem. Also, you can factorize it just like a normal 2x square minus 3x plus 1 just like this is a question about cross method then you can have 2 times something and then something uh, it means 2p square and then p square next we look at the last term which is plus 1 so you should expect 1 minus 1 and the other one is also minus 1 then uh, the last step is about factorizing the remaining part which is p plus 1 and p minus 1 now look at the given conditions, which is a p squared plus b, p plus c, p plus d, then uh, just matching all the constant there, where you have a equals to 2, b equals to negative 1, c equals to 1, d to the negative 1, e, d equals to negative 1, of course you can exchange c and d, but it doesn't uh, affect the final answer for a plus b plus c plus d, and the final answer would be uh, 1. Look at number four. Uh, this is just for uh, interest because it comes from a very famous theorem, which is called Wilson's theorem. And uh, I think most of you may not have heard of that because it's out of the syllabus and it's related to number theory. And that would just be related to Olympic math. Uh, but just for interest, you can go to the internet to search for it. And what is that about? It means uh, if you have some of the terms multiplying together up to a certain prime number, minus one. Uh, if I write it in a more user-friendly way, then you will have 1 times 2 times 3 times up to a certain prime number minus 1. If you have this kind of thing, after you divide it by that prime number, and the remainder must be always p minus 1, the remainder. Also, this is uh, from 
Wilson's theorem. If you are interested about the proof, of course, you can go to the internet or just Wikipedia, you can search for it. But uh, not so easy for you to understand, but uh, there will be some uh, meaning, meaningful concept or some insights for you. You can uh, go there. It's not too uh, impossible to understand anyway. Okay. And uh, from this uh, Wilson's theorem, because uh, P is a prime number, 11 is a prime number. So uh, you can use Wilson's theorem for this question and uh, 1 times 2 up to 10 and then divided by 11, the remainder will be 10. Okay. So the answer for number 4 would be 10. Okay. But of course, I do not expect you to understand this theorem, uh, to know this theorem. So how can you still get the answer? Okay. There are two ways. The first way is you can use calculator to get this value. And then you divide, the, divide this value by 11. Uh, you should get a certain value, which is 329890.9091. There will be some decimal part, right? So just ignore it. Because uh, if you divide by 11, you want to know the quotient, which is 329890. And then how can you get the remainder? Uh, remainder is by uh, dividing this very big number by 11. You get the quotient. So if you want to get the remainder, you will have the big number minus big number, which is a 1 times 2 times 3 up to 10. Very big number minus 329890 multiplied by 11. Then the answer would be 10. Right? This is what I expect you to do. Okay, and uh, also, there is another uh, very interesting idea related to remainder. Uh, I'm not going to talk too much about mod. Uh, MOD. Right? If, uh, some of you may know what is mod, but I don't use this uh, symbol here. Uh, if you're interested, you can go to internet to search for mod. Right? Uh, modulus. Uh, the long term of that is M-O-D-U-L-U-S. Modulus. Also, how can you deal with remainder instead of just calculating 1 times 2 times 3 up to 10? Because it's a big number, then uh, you may not be very happy about this. Okay, so now I show you how to use remainder to uh, uh, remainder related thing to calculate this question. Let's say one times two times three times four. Okay, this is a small number that you can calculate, right? Also, uh, in our mind, uh, we only look at the remainder after it is divided by eleven. Also, one times two times three times four is twenty four. So when you divide divide it by eleven the remainder would be 2. So you can take 2 as the result for this part. And then you use 2, multiply by 5, multiply by 6, right? then you get 60. Divided by 11, the remainder is 5. And then you use 5 here to continue your uh, calculation. Multiply by 7, you get 35. Divided by 11, the remainder is 2. 2 multiplied by 8, the uh, result is 16, the remainder is 5. 5 multiplied by 9, the uh, result is 45, divided by 11, the uh, remainder is 1. And finally, 1 multiplied by 10, the remainder is 10. It means that for every step, you can take the remainder after it is divided by 11 to calculate the following, instead of uh, calculating a very big number and then divided by 11, although it's still not very hard for you to calculate. Okay, but this is a way that you can uh, use. If you want to know more about uh, why this is true, uh, of course, you can use more algebra to prove for that, okay, but not now. Wait, okay, number five, uh, this is a question that, uh, although you did not learn exactly this type, but I hope you can um, understand yourself, even no one taught you. Because if you are going to find a coefficient of something after the expansion, you have to look at the pairs, the product pair that give this x to the power 4. Also, you have to search for any pair after multiplying each other, it gives you x to the power 4. So first, the, uh, the first pair is from 3x to the power 3 and negative 4x. Because uh, if you expand these things, you will uh, do it by rainbow method. The first pair comes from 3x to the power 3 and minus 4x. So what does it give? It gives negative 12x to the power 4. And then you have to search for another pair, which is 
negative 2x squared, 5x squared. This pair also should give you x to the power 4 as the result, which is minus 10x to the power 4. So you only need to look at these two instead of multiplying everything. Uh, multiplying everything is okay, but it takes time. So if you only focus on these two pairs, then you should know the final coefficient of x to the power 4 would be negative 22. Don't write negative 22 x to the power 4 because we only look at the coefficient. Number 6. Uh, if you study uh, chapter 4 yeah, in grade 10 core, and then you'll find it's very simple. However, I don't want you to uh, use some very advanced method. What's meant by slope of a certain line? It means this is a straight line and you try to find any two points here, and then you have x1, y1, x2, y2. The slope is vertical distance over horizontal distance. But from this equation, how can you obtain two points? I always strongly emphasize that for a certain straight line, there are infinitely many points you can use. Right? So for this straight line, you can just uh, imagine any two points and then you find the slope between them. For example, uh, if you put x equals to 0, then you have y equals to 2. If you have x equals to 4, then y equals to 0. You can use other points as well. I just randomly make two. Uh, these two values should satisfy this equation, so they are two points on this line. Then what is the slope of that? You have 2 minus 0 over 0 minus 4. The answer would be negative 1 over 2 or negative 0.5. Uh, wherever you type, you should get a, a correct answer here. If you don't, you can tell me. Number 7 is a ratio problem. Um, just use algebra to make an equation it will not be too hard however the uh, kickoff point is how you let the thing right, so how can you let uh, so that uh, the question becomes easy uh, because you have the ratio of boys to girls originally is 5 to 1 so I would let it as 5x and x respectively and then 10 more girls enter the class it means that from x to, to x plus 10 the new number of girls and the new number of boys does not change it means still 5x and the ratio is 10 over 7 then you can calculate it easily x equals to 4 after you calculate x equals to 4 then you can find the original number of students in the class as 5x plus x which is 24 number 8 is the most interesting questions in this quiz and um, many of you may want to discuss on this uh, so the only challenging point is how can you obtain this expression without finding out x of course if you find x is possible but x is a very ugly number uh, it is some third form all right but uh, if you are observant enough uh, you know that the x square things should come from x plus one of x bracket square so if you square up both sides of the original expression, uh, you should have x squared, 1 over x squared, and the middle term is 2ab. 2 times x times a 1 over x is exactly 2, which is free from variable. And the right hand side is 9. So after you put the 2 to the other side, then you get the answers already. The answer is 7. So you do not need to solve for x. Number 9 is a similar question actually. So uh, just now from part number 8, you know that uh, you can expand these things. Uh, x squared plus 2 plus 1 over x squared equals to 9. And then if you want to find x minus 1 over x, then you can also try to um, square it up. It means that if you square x minus 1 over x squared, at 1 over x and then square, the, uh, the result would be x squared minus 2 plus 1 over x squared equals to a because you square up both sides. Alright, so uh, from the first line to the second line, I want to calculate a. Uh, how can you do that? Uh, you can uh, know that from number 8, x squared plus 1 over x squared is actually equal to 7. Right? So now uh, you can have a equals to 5. Right, maybe I write some more steps for you. Okay. Uh, from number 8, you know that this part is 7. 
so we have 7 minus 2 equals to a, a equals to 5. Right, so number 8 and number 9 are quite related. Okay, lastly, number 10 uh, should not be a challenging question, but uh, you may not have a lot of experience dealing with continued fraction. Oh, if you're interested, you can also go to the internet to search for this. It is a topic uh, which is widely discussed. Uh, widely discussed, okay. Uh, continued fraction. Okay, so how can you deal with this uh, expression? Uh, we start from the most complicated part, which is the uh, 1 over 3 plus a part. Also, when you uh, make the common denominator, which is 3 plus a, then you have 6 plus 2a here, and then plus 1. Next, because you have 1 divided by a certain things, it means 1 choi, the denominator, right? So uh, it is turning the uh, denominator upside down. So the next step would be like 3 plus a over 2a plus 7. And you bring the original 3 plus a to the numerator. Next, I continue to make another common denominator, which is 2a plus 7. So you have 2a plus 7 here, and then 3 plus a. Finally, uh, it's just a simple question now. Uh, 3a plus 10 equals to 8a plus 28, and the answer would be... Uh, negative 18 over 5, or negative 3.6. Okay, so that's the answer. Alright, so I hope this, uh, this discussion will help you understand more about these 10 questions. These 10 questions are not M2 questions, uh, but they are just some uh, uh, interesting things uh, for you to know more. And just now when I am talking about this, you can see there are a lot of things you can research more if you're interested. Uh, so many information from the internet and I hope you enjoy it because uh, as an M2 question, as an M2 student, uh, I think you you should um do a lot of things more than just uh lesson materials. Anyway, I hope you enjoy this video. Goodbye.